Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, and to all of you are welcome to my new broadcasting of Streams in the Desert. This is your pastor, Yeti. Our devotion for today is, Jesus replied, You may go, your son will live. Jesus replied, You may go, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe. When you are confronted with a matter that requires immediate prayer, pray until you believe God, until with wholehearted sincerity, you can thank him for the answer. If you do not see the external answer immediately, do not pray for it in such a way that it is evident you are not definitely believing God for it. This type of prayer will be an hindrance instead of a help to you. And when you are finished praying, you will find that your faith has been wakened or has entirely gone. The urgency you felt to offer this kind of prayer is clearly from self and Satan. It may not be wrong to mention the matter to the Lord again. If he is keeping you waiting for his answer, but be sure to do so in a way that shows your fate. Never pray in a way that the Diminish your fate. You may tell him you are waiting. Still believing and therefore praising him for the answer. There is nothing that so fully solidifies fate as being so sure of the answer that you can thank God for it. Prayer that empty us of faith, deny both God's promises from His Word and the yes that He whispered to our hearts. Such prayers are only the expression of the unrest of our hearts, and unrest implies unbelief that our prayers will be answered. Now we have, now who have believed, entered that rest. This you can find in the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 3. The type of prayer that empties us of faith frequently arises from focusing our thoughts on the difficulty rather than on God's promise. Abraham, without uh, weakening in his faith, faced that the fact that his body was as good as that. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. May we wait, may we, may we watch and pray so that we will not fail into temptation of prayer, faith diminishing prayers. Faith is not a sense, nor sight, nor reason. But simply taking God as His word. The beginning of anxiety is the end of faith, and the beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. You will never learn faith in comfortable surroundings. God gives us His promises in a quiet hour, seals our covenants with great and gracious words and then steps back, waiting to see how much we believe. He then allows the temper to come, and the ensuing test seems to contradict all that he has spoken. This is when faith wins its crown. This is the time to look up through the storm and among the trembling. Frightened sailors declare, I have faith in God, that it will happen just as he told me. Believe and trust. 
through stars and suns, through life and death, through soul and sense. His wise, paternal purpose runs. The darkness of his providence in starlight is starlight with divine intense belief and trust. In all these reflections, my beautiful people, there is no judgment, there is only love. I give these reflections to project it on my life and to offer it to you, to use it as a mirror as we look at ourselves in a mirror, how do we face ourselves? And maybe we can try it out if there is no faith. Maybe we wait in our prayer to ask God. God allows us to use everything to come as close as we can in this life to God. So use everything. When you doubt, maybe stop for a moment to pray. Whatever you want to do, God will always help you and instruct you by the insight and knowledge of His Holy Spirit. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your pastor, Yeti. I love you guys. Bye.